I'm delighted to be able to introduce Nava Levit Binun, um, who uh, Lana, uh, Nava and I met each other uh, at a, uh, a research board that we're both part of for a, a project in uh, Berlin that Lucas is doing his PhD around with, some of you will remember Helle, who is one of the reviewers for the Compassionate Systems um, uh, Master Practitioner Program. And so Nava and I met, and uh, you know, one of those moments where I started sharing something about what we're doing with Compassionate Systems Framework, and Nava started sharing something about what she's doing with the Purple uh, School Initiative in Israel, and we were like, hmm, seems like we're doing a lot of the same things and that we're really on this journey together. Now part of what our aspiration is with this lab is of course bringing the community together of people who are doing similar work. This is not a, we're not in this to make sure that everybody now does our thing. We want to have a collaborative community structure around people around the world who are, who have shared aspirations for the types of changes we would like to see in the world. So I'm really delighted to be able to welcome you, Nava, as a uh, kindred spirit in the work and on this journey. And we're just delighted to hear how you've been approaching this in Israel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Meta. I'm very, very excited to be here. Um, I'm um, a neuroscientist from Israel, from uh, the Reichman University. I head the Sagol Center for Brain and Mind. And um, 2009, um, you know, looking at what's happening in our society in Israel and in general in the world, I was thinking to myself, how do we, um, what can we do from the knowledge that we have? Uh, my lab uh, studies, tries to study uh, actually th similar things um, that you heard here, uh, not MIT, but still um, we look at the neuroscience and psychology um, related to mental health, to how we develop mental health, how we can train, and mindfulness is very central in the lab. Um, and, um, and, 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 I, and we were thinking to ourselves, you know, can we do something um, in terms of the society that we're living in? And um, we actually do quite a lot of things. And what I'm going to tell you today is about the Sagol Purple School uh, project. The Sagol in Hebrew is purple, and it's also um, the name of um, the donors, the uh, very, very uh, special family that is supporting our work for quite a lot of time and helping us do this translation from uh, the lab to the field. Um, and recently, in the last uh, four years, we're also supported by the Yad Nadiv Foundation, which is a very big foundation in Israel, invested heavily in education and with a vision that is very, um, inf I think, inspirational about how to do the paradigm shifts that we're all talking about. We need a lot, a lot of patience and, and, and to work very smart. And I'm very inspired by the way they're, they're working. Um, and I just want to say that for me coming here, it was very exciting because um, like Meta said, when we were talking to each other, we, were, we, we both felt that we're actually um, sisters in our hearts and, 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 and the way we think. And then um, Meta invited me to the workshop that was um, in Humboldt County. I was there online, so I know a lot of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 quite interesting to see that even when you're online you see people and um and I was listening there and I was like wow wow this is what we're doing I mean this is um and it was very helpful for me and I went into the into your website and I really we really started reading all the things that you published and it's very important the work that you're doing because um when people would ask me what we're doing I would say oh we're um mindfulness based social emotional learning program, but actually, <laughs> after I read your work and your framework, I was like, no, we're not. We're, we're um, a model for um, trying to bring in systems thinking and systems sensing with contemplative tools to do transformation. And we work, um, um, we started, um, w most of what I'm going to tell you today is our work in schools, but from last year, we're also working in mun municipalities, and we're trying to develop models of system change in the level of municipality, which I'm not, I don't think I will have time to tell about that too much today, but just so you'll know if you're interested. 
And um, I want to say that one of my central influences from the really beginning was um, someone that's now also a friend, Richie Davidson. And it was also nice to see that you're also working with his model. Um, because um, when, you know, when we were thinking, what can we do for Israeli society? Um, the intuition was when, um, as a neuroscientist, yeah, that if we can help, uh, if, if we can introduce these basic skills of awareness, of connection, of insight, of, of purpose, um, to, uh, and, and from a system point of view, I'm, I really remember thinking that because I'm a physicist in first training, and I was thinking if we only move everybody a little bit, maybe something big will change, right? This is a system thinking. And this is, this, that's how we went out, and um, we are also training mindfulness uh, practitioners, etc. But I want to tell you about the um, work we do in education. And um, like a lot of other people that believe that mindfulness can change the world, uh, we started with working with teachers and giving teachers um, the possibility to really train and, and, and their skills and competences in, in this area of Richie Davidson's model. And we worked really, really, really hard, and um, we saw amazing things. But we also thought that it doesn't stick, and that you know we're working very hard. And the moment it, we finish or we go out of the uh, go out, um, th 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 the things don't stick. Um, and it took us time to get to understand what you call the iceberg model. So we really felt it on. You know, we, we worked so hard many years and, 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 and now we, we can say that, you know, this is the framework we can, we, we feel it in our legs and in our bodies, that you really have to see the whole structure um, if you want to make change. And really the whole structure is a very, very complex network in which we have teachers and children and their parents and the community, but we also lo look at the organization and we look at the leadership and we have all these, uh, what you call artifacts, I learned from you to call it artifacts, like routines and structures and evaluations and policy in the physical space and the language, and of course all the ecosystem, like the municipality and the Ministry of Education, etc. And, um, and, and, and we started thinking systems and, and, and looking at this network and seeing how we can work with, um, with all this system. And when I'm saying, um, and, and then a little bit later we also started doing sensing because we understood that you have to have the sensing in order for the processes to happen. And when I say we, then in the heart of of what, what I'm talking about is the Purple Lab. Um, and this is a group of uh, interdisciplinary practitioners coming from education, from neuroscience, from psychology, from contemplative uh, research and, contem and contemplative themselves. Um, and um, really, um, I think what this amazing group is doing, I'm only the academic that's telling you about it, but this amazing group, and it's headed by Tamar Khaviv, which we hoped could come also, but we didn't think that, we didn't consider that in post-COVID, it takes so much time to get a visa, so she couldn't come. I hope she will come next time. Um, and um, this group is very, I think they're, they're really specialists in taking and translating theories and models into practices and into tools and to all kinds of uh, ways to help, to, to really give the practitioners in the field, the educational practitioners, um, the, the tools to do, to, to do implementation and change. And um, I just want to pause for a moment and say that one of the dear people here, um, is Oren Ergaz, which unfortunately uh, passed away a few months ago, and I really want to dedicate this talk to him. He was a central person in the program, and a lot of the contemplative pedagogy that I will tell about a little bit uh, was um, um, uh, developed uh, under his inspiration. He was uh, a professor in a teacher college and did a lot of work, wrote a lot, a lot about uh, contemplative pedagogy. So. Um, we directly work with the teachers, with the leadership, and with the organization. And, but through working with them, we actually 
touch upon a lot of the other things, the pedagogy, the routine and structures, the physical space, the language, the metrics, um, the social fields, children, of course, this says we want to get to the children and, um, and, and, and the other uh, nodes here in the network. So I want to um, take a, f a, a few minutes just to like, describe very briefly what we do in these three nodes. Um, but before I continue, I want to say that um, what uh, one of the models that we're working with is um, the C um, model, the social emotional ethical learning of Emory University. And uh, Trinley is going to be talking about not exactly the model, but, she, but she's uh, representing the C learning uh, program. And um, it, it, uh, when we were looking for a model to, um, that will express what we're doing, uh, we met this model and we really fell in love with it. So we don't do specific, exactly what, what the Emory uh, group is doing, but we're using their model. And with a little bit changes, uh, like you say, we, instead of saying compassion, we say caring presence. Um, but most of the things are very similar. And this is actually the basis for um, the, uh, what we call the C model inspired nuclear skills. So from this model, we extracted a language. Um, and uh, that's the nuclear skills, and they're grouped under a few categories of uh, cultivating modes of awareness. So you have mindfulness of body and senses, mindfulness of emotions, attending to others. You have the acting in a non-reactive value-oriented way. So the pause and bringing intention, collecting uh, attention. We have cultivating and discerning accepting attitude. Um, beginner's mind, accepting, accepting an open approach, et cetera, fostering caring presence, kindness and acceptance, caring presence. And they're very much in, inspired by this model and a little bit more. <laughs> so um, we work with teachers like we started from the beginning. Um, in the beginning, we give the teachers, um, the, 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 we, we help the teachers um, cultivate and foster these uh, skills, the core skills that I uh, met that were in the previous slide, but after that, we also um, uh, the next the next uh, stage of training is uh, how to introduce the skills into the classroom and specifically through pedagogy and develop their own pedagogy. So, uh, very important to say that we're not we don't have a curriculum and um, we don't have you know we don't say to teachers this is what you do. We try to um, help teachers be able to develop this by themselves. And whoever is in the profession knows that this is very, very difficult and challenging. But we, but the moment, um, so we try to do all the infrastructure to do that. But when it happens, when it succeeds, it's amazing. Because it comes from their own stomach, yeah, from their own um, um, planning. So here you see again your model. <laughs> I found it and I liked it. Um, so we're, we're certainly using it. <laughs> and I, I want to say that you, you have a very important role here in MIT because building these frameworks is exactly what enables practitioners like us um, work and, and uh, be able to explain what we're doing, right? So it's very, import very important. So um, then we have, we work with the leadership. The leadership, every school um, that we work with, they need to choose a leadership. The leadership would always, always be a prin the principal of the school and then usually um, the counselor and one or two, maybe three more um, leading teachers in the school that choose to be in the leadership. It's very important. They always choose. Schools also choose to be in the program. Um, and, um, um, and, it, and it's not enough that the principal chooses. The, there should be some kind of a critical mass of, of staff that also um, chooses. Um, and what we do in this, in the purple leadership, um, it's a, it goes over the three years, uh, 120 hours overall, and um, we do a lot of what is in the in the three-legged stool: um, personal mastery, um, personal vision, building a shared vision, um, being able to. Um, uh, see their met the, to, to be able to see the mental models, uh, dialogue, 
and um, and also understand complexity. Um, and we use a lot of models actually developed in MIT. So um, Peter's name is well known to us, Otto Schwermer, <laughs> which is now in Israel. Um, and so this work is is was the basis of the development of our leadership program, which was developed um, by um, someone that's uh, expert in organizational learning and knows all the MIT work. Um, and one of the uh, key things that are happening is that we start to introduce the common language based on these core skills. And um, so these icons that you see are really everywhere in what we do. And it's very important. It took us time to understand that people need also sometimes something to hold and something to, you know, to, to put on the table and sometimes something to see um, to get again and again and reminded about the intentions. So you will see these icons everywhere um, and you will see them also in when we um, have um, uh, all kinds of ideas or um, uh, suggestions. They will always have the icons that are relevant for these suggestions. And um, when things also are implemented in schools, you will start, one of the um, signs that things are implemented is that you start seeing the school use the icons um, spontaneously. So here, for example, um, you see signs that the school put outside with all kinds of suggestions for kids what they can do in uh, in the in the yard. Or here, um, where now we actually um, have uh, worked with Arab schools and with um, now in recently also religious schools. So it's really all over the spectrum. Um, and um, here, this is a um, activity that the school. Uh, team developed by themselves for Hanukkah <laughs> and each card is an activity with and you can see the sk the, set, the the skill that is developed okay so you see um, they really give a, they give suggestions for the parents and, t and kids to do at home and they also explicit what is the skill that can be developed and this is a board of, of, in a class where the teacher and the kids develop um, activities for um, mindful more mornings, but they develop their own activity for the mindful moment. Um, but we also realize that it's not enough just to give uh, the leadership all kinds of skills, because uh, y there's also the challenge of bringing it into the organization. And um, pretty fast we added an organizational mentorship so the leaders, they go to this leadership program. Um, they actually also uh, attend the uh, staff training. So in the staff training, they get the skills for themselves. In the leadership program, they, get, they, they, they understand how to use the skills as leaders. And then in the mentorship, how to use the skills in the organization to change the organization. And here, really, there's a lot of... Um, tools that we develop to help the teachers um, look at the organization um, and we look at the organization as a uh, organism. So the organism, the organization has pain, has contractions, has places which are actually pleasant, places where it's unpleasant, um, areas uh, all, all kinds of mental habits, some of them beneficial and some not beneficial, and uh, and and they go they they go to the leadership program and they learn something there and then they come and uh, twice a, twice a month they meet with a mentor inside their school and see how they can apply the tools that they got into their specific school. Um, so, for example, you may have seen the cards over there. Um, I don't know if you you know um, rain. Do you know Rain, Tara Brach? Okay, so Rain in mindfulness, people that uh, practice mindfulness may have uh, met the Rain protocol, which is a way to work with difficult emotions. Um, so it goes, first of all, we recognize, okay? The, the second step is to accept, this is how it is. The third is to investigate, 
And when we investigate from a mindfulness perspective, then we really want to ask ourselves, where, how does it feel in the body? You know, how does it, uh, uh, how does it uh, uh, manifest? What are the thoughts, emotions, sensations that are present right now? Um, and it's a whole process of really looking in a non-judgmental way in what is happening right now with this difficult emotion. And after we investigate it from a mindfulness perspective with a, this accepting non-judgmental stance, then the next last question is, okay, so how can, what, what should be nourished right now in order to address this uh, state right now? So the, the leaders, they learn the RAIN model for themselves, first of all how to work with difficult emotions in themselves. And then as leaders, also how to use the RAIN in interpersonal situations. But then when they meet the mentor, they are also asked to go around the school and try to recognize in the school areas that are um, areas of pain or areas of contraction, areas of difficulty on one hand, and the other hand, the areas that are actually working well. But when they do that, they use the same protocol. So first of all, recognize, accept, this is how it is right now. Investigate, now the uh, organism becomes a, uh, the uh, organization becomes an organism. So you can, for example, uh, you know, places where you have tension or places where you have pressure, or you have contraction, there's usually it comes with all kinds of indications like maybe people are talking in higher voices or maybe there's much more energy or maybe there's um, 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 a lot of uh, in, a lot of uh, anger in the staff so they <coughs> really go through a process of investigation with uh, all kinds of um, tools for example uh, fly on the wall or shadowing you know they're probably you you know, of these tools of how to investigate actually what's happening, what, what's happening in these areas of contraction. And then they sit together and think, what can we nourish? What can we do? For example, there was a school that um, in this process, they discovered that there's a group of teachers that are having a lot of difficulty with managing the classroom. And this takes a lot of energy from all the organization. It takes time from the principal and they're very frustrated and, uh, and, 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 and it really uh, absorbs a lot of the energy of the organization. So they did the RAIN process and they decided that they would take the teachers, these teachers that had the difficulty, and give them a 10 um, week um, program um, uh, of all kinds of suggestions how to work with difficulties in the class. Um, and support them as a st as the whole school, supporting the teachers that have difficulty and really nourishing them and, and seeing how they can help them. This was a, one example. Another example, another school was, um, uh, you know, I, I will continue with, with another example with, the, with what I wanted to say next. But I just want to say that um, in this process, um, uh, the idea here is that everything that happens is a um, is like a meditation cushion. Um, after many years, that we really wanted everybody to practice mindfulness, and we really wanted the kids to practice mindfulness. You know, formally, we let go of that. We understood that this is not our aim. Okay, the aim is to cultivate these skills, and they don't have to be cultivated necessarily on, formally on the cushion. But how can we make everything that happens in school a uh, opportunity to practice? Okay, so you see that everything is inside and outside. It's really nice that we that uh, both in the morning and then the talk after that there was this inside outside attention and inside attention. So we look both inside and then outside and see how things resonate together. So, for example, another thing that they can do with the mentor is what we call um, the purple, ah, thank you. I like maps. The purple island map. So um, in the that usually happens in the second and third year and the team, the, purple, the leadership team, they look at this map 
and they take these icons and they ask themselves, how are the different skills um, manifesting in the different islands of the organization? So we have um, the curriculum and we have staff meetings and we have physical spaces and evaluation, testing and grading and pedagogy. And they really go island by island and ask themselves, which are the skills that are manifest there? Which do we want to add? And how can uh, uh, we do that? Um, and maybe before we... Um, thank you. <laughs> I'll let you go. But before we continue, maybe we can do that together, I asked you guys to um, pick up an icon, and I asked you to try to pick an icon that maybe um, relates to a skill that you would like um, to, pr to, to be able to practice in your um, work, or maybe that you are practicing in your work. Okay, so, um, and as we do it, I will also introduce another pedagogic practice. So I would like you to um, <coughs> enter your inner classroom. Okay, so we, we have a classroom here, but like the talk before us said, and Oren Ergaz, our friend, dear friend, um, he would always say that, he says, at every moment there are three classrooms that are happening simultaneously, right? There's the external classroom of the teacher teaching something, but at the same time, there's the internal class, inner classroom of all my inner life, which usually in schools doesn't get any attention, and even sometimes gets the opposite message, which says your inner classroom is not of interest here, okay? And also there's the inter, inter social, inter, um, um, how did I say that? Interpersonal, interpersonal classroom, okay? So I want you uh, to take a moment and uh, maybe you can even close your eyes if you want or if you want to a journal and um, go into your inner room, inner classroom and try to really resonate with um, your decision, why did you pick this um, icon? I mean, did, what was the, uh, what, what attracted, what, what, why did that icon call you? And um, maybe you can contemplate on, um, you know, when you think about this skill that you chose, first of all, how does it feel in your body? And, uh, what emotions come up, what associations come up with this skill. Maybe pleasant, maybe unpleasant. And the ability to be with whatever comes up. And if it's a skill that you're actually able to practice at work, maybe even um, gratitude for the fact that it's possible. And if it's not, yeah, what does it, uh, what happens inside you now that you, um, when you think about it, that it's actually, your work, that in your workplace you're not able to uh, have the space to um, cultivate such a skill. So we're doing it a little bit fast, okay, but just to get the idea. So, um, so now maybe we can... Um, Visit the interpersonal room for a moment, and maybe if you can um, turn to a partner, um, we'll do it fast, but turn to a partner, and let's take uh, maybe a minute or a minute, a little bit more than a minute, for each partner to share um, uh, why, why they chose uh, this icon. But before that, I want to suggest Um, that we remember this icon of openness and acceptance and bring that into the uh, interpersonal space, okay, of just being able to be open and listening and not reacting. And after I gave, I give a, I give a note that a minute is over, um, the other, the person that was listening, just share one word that resonates that came up, okay? And then we'll switch, okay? 
So let's do that. Okay, so maybe you can finish the last sentence and then have your partner resonate one word and then switch. So um, I just want to show you um, this, uh, these cards. Again, for most of you who are here, you don't need these cards, okay? Um, but this can be very helpful when you want to uh, pass it on to other teachers. So for example, each room have so much coordination, sorry. Okay. So um, each room has, for example, the inner room, behind, be, behind it you have the qualities that can be um, cultivated. So for example, pausing the autopilot, attention regulation, getting to know my intentions and values, being with myself, producing knowledge from within, Noticing inner experiences, sensations, feelings, and thoughts. Accepting my inner experience. Um, recognizing, nurturing inner strength. And then all kinds of actions that could be helpful to help people go into, uh, for example, invent and imagine type of things. Reflection. <coughs> writing and art. Uh, noticing and inquiring. Connecting to my personal life. <coughs> recalling or restoring a memory. The same for the um, interpersonal room and for the uh, communal room. So, um, I'll do a pause. So for example, one of the schools that um, did this exercise, and they do it again and again. Um, they, um, um, th this kind of work really helped them um, understand that they need to, in, when, they went, when they got to the evaluation, testing, grading, they understood that the, what they're doing is not, uh, is not um, in line with, you know, with their vision, but they need a vision. And um, here's their vision of their educational vision, um, which is even painted on the wall of one of the rooms, um, and I tried to um, <coughs> translate it to English, but it says, um, in my action, I create my world, and there's self-awareness, skills, self-regulation, learning skills, seeing the others and their needs, skillful relationships, and environmental responsibility. And actually, when they do the grading and the evaluation, this is the basis for the evaluation in the school. Um, yeah, and this is Savion School, very special school, and we'll see other, other, this is, for example, a school where you know, implementation went very, very deep and very um, exciting. I want to talk a little bit about pedagogy because, like I said, we don't have a curriculum. The idea is that we say, um, let's try to get three in the price of one, right? This is an American thing. Three in the price of one. <laughs> okay? So in the same lesson, a child both learns something about the world, that's, that's what uh, everybody wants him to learn. But also she learns about something about herself and also has the ability to practice interpersonal skills. So that's three in the price of one. And how do we do that? And, and it's very hard to get teachers to be able to you know, do that from their own initiative, but we're very stubborn. And again, I'm going back to the C model, which we adapted. And when you look at the C model, then you see that you have uh, the personal domain, the interpersonal domain, and the systemic domain. And then you have um, awareness, caring, they say compassion, we call it caring presence, and um, engagement. And, but we can look really at each of these, and this really becomes the three rooms that we were talking about. And it can really change the whole class because someone was saying, right, that they, we are with the teacher and the, child, and, the, and the children. This is usually the relationships in class. But when we add the, inter, the inner classroom, then there's also, yeah, the, the, the error also goes inside. 
And then when the interpersonal, then we have also these interactions. And when you go with the community, which is three or more, and it can also go outside the classroom to look at the larger um, uh, systems around us, then suddenly this becomes a very, very complex system of interactions that can happen inside a class. Yeah. Um, so, and, um, Slowly, slowly, in these three years, uh, teachers are mentored to be able to build a, cl a, 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 um, a uh, lesson plan that has the different elements. So we talk about the beginning of the lesson and the heart of the lesson and the end of the lesson. And we have all kinds of suggestions. These are things that they have practiced by themselves. Um, for example, we can do a check-in like we do here, a pause, um, bringing intention, uh, noticing the setting, um, the learning setting, or we can have a reflection and gratitude. And they, are, they learn to build their own lessons from all these building blocks. And it takes time, it takes time, but it happens. And sometimes you will see, you know, teachers taking it all the way into really doing contemplative practices and meditations in the class. And um, this is an example of, and, and this is a school, Savion School is a school of special uh, education with children that have um, difficulties regulating themselves. So there's a lot of violence issues and stuff like that. And um, that's the school where where I showed you the educational vision. So this kid spontaneously explains what they're doing. It's amazing. איסוף קשב בא לעזור לנו להירגע, לנשום, לפתוח את הלב, לפתוח את הנשמה, לפתוח את הראש. אם למשל יש ילד שהוא עצמני, או כועס, או בסערת רגשות, הוא נושב חמש נשימות, והוא... ואז הוא חוזר על עצמו ואוסף את הקשב שלו בחזרה. אוסף את הקשב שלו בחזרה וחוזר להיות תלמיד. תלמיד. ולא, ולא אומר אופן פה וזה וזה וזה. הוא עוצר. נרגע וחוזר להיות תלמיד ואז, ואז הוא מרגיש שהוא כבר יכול להיכנס לכיתה הוא חוזר לכיתה ונרגע זה, בגלל זה אנחנו מתרגלים איסוף קשב ועצירה כל בוקר אנחנו עושים את זה כי בבוקר אנחנו עייפים באים, באים ככה ככה פיפטי פיפטי כזה ואנחנו רוצים להחזיר את הקשב שלנו כי אנחנו בבוקר לא כל כך מקשיבים נכון? אז אנחנו צריכים להקשיב, אנחנו רוצים שאנחנו נקשיב ובגלל זה אנחנו מתרגלים את זה כל בוקר וזה עוזר וזהו. So this teacher, um, she took, you know, the guidance and the mentoring all the way into being able to sit and, um, and give mindfulness practice, but it wasn't this is not something they have to do, okay? This is something that came from her, from her, from her development inside the program. Now, this is MIT, right? And um, before I show you him, I want to show yes, you yes. this. Sorry. So this is Scratch. Um, so the, that, that was a control group, right? But here, this is a, a kid that... Um, wrote a scratch code for, um, uh, sorry, it was, I, I thought I wrote it in English, um, uh, a game that's called uh, Thoughts as um, Clouds. Thoughts as Clouds, okay? But look at this kid. He did a Minecraft a project. So this is the teacher that, um, אני אעשה את פרויקט הרגשות, ככל שהרגש יותר נעים ויותר חזק, הם מרגישים אותו יותר, רואים אותו יותר טוב. ואני, יש שתי רגשות שאני מרגיש מאוד חזק, והן נעימות לי, 
זה, הם, זה גאווה ושמחה שאני מנבחרת מחשבים ו, ואני מרגיש את זה הכי, הכי חזק, שזה בצבע האדום, שזה בבטן, בידיים, בכתפיים ובפנים. וואו, רייט? <laughs> <Right? laughs> Um, and this is, this is the computer teacher. This is her interpretation of the pedagogy skills uh, that she received. And it was completely her ideas. Um, okay, I want to talk about social fields, which is a term that I'm using since I met Meta. Meta. Um, so, um, or, uh, quite in the beginning we understood that um, with all due respect to mindfulness and practices and all these you know, compassion and everything, if you go into a place where people feel exhausted, where they feel not seen, where they feel not belonging, they don't have autonomy, they don't feel competent, they don't have the resources to do anything that you want to, you want to give them. Um, so, Pretty fast, we understood that before we go with to this more sophisticated skills, we need to um, find ways to cultivate um, the basic psychological needs. And the more the schools become uh, need supportive schools, then the more we see we will see generative social fields, and things will start happening. So um, And let's listen to her before I go into the theory. שלום, אני רויטל קרן, מחנכת בבית ספר סביון. כמורה ותיקה ש-20 שנה מחנכת בבית ספר, מן הסתם בתחילת הדרך עלו בי המון התנגדויות. ממקום שעובד בשיטה מאוד ברורה, שיטה התנהגותית, שעבורי לפחות הוכחה כיעילה ונכונה להתחיל לדבר בשפה אחרת, רגשית יותר. עבורי זה היה משהו שלא ראיתי אותו קורה. לא האמנתי בשינוי הגדול הזה שמה, שהגענו אליו היום. עבורי לפחות, מה שהסיר את ההתנגדויות לאט לאט, זה באמת המקום שנתנו לנו כצוות להתנסות, להרגיש את הדרך, לחוות מהמקום שלנו. לא הרגשתי שדורשים ממני הספק, לא הרגשתי שמכריחים אותי לעשות משהו שלא טוב לי, אם זה לעמוד עם קערה בהתחלה או אה, לשחק בקלפים. באמת בחרתי בנקודות שלי היה נוח בהן. ולאט לאט, ככל שהדרך אה, ממשיכה, ואתה רואה שזה עובד, ואת רואה את הילדים מתחברים, ואת רואה שגם את אה, מתחילה לקצור את הפירות, את אה, ממשיכה וממשיכה להתנסות בעוד משהו. ובשיתוף מהצוות לראות עוד דברים שהם התנסו ושאת מתחברת אליהם ואת אה, מנסה גם בכיתה ומה שעובד עובד ומה שפחות עובד לא עובד וגם היום אני חושבת שהיופי הוא שאנחנו נעבור כיתה כיתה בבית ספר ונראה את אותה שפה מדוברת בית ספרית אבל שכל מורה באמת אה, מראה את הדרך שלו ואנחנו נראה את זה מיושם בדרך שונה בכל כיתה וכיתה ועדיין אנחנו יכולים ללמוד אחד מהשני כצוות ו... ממשיכים בתהליך. אני מאוד שמחה שעברנו את זה, אז היום אני באמת חסידה, וממקום של התנגדות מאוד גדולה, אני באמת שמחה על כל רגע ורגע בדרך. ואנחנו עדיין ממשיכים בלמידה. So what was the um, basic psychological needs that was supported for her in this process? safety, space choice, right? Okay, so, so we, we use the, the language of self-determination theory, but we, we use it loose, loosely, okay? It's just that it has so much um, science, uh, study around it. And also, uh, Richard Ryan is also a mindfulness uh, researcher. Um, so, they also connected the self-determination theory to mindfulness. But we really look at, um, we, all, we, we really look at the three basic needs, competence, autonomy, and relatedness in school. And our idea is that th these are uh, indicators of generative social fields. And in a, in a neuroscientific wor uh, wording, I would say, They are indicators of the availability of social, emotional, cognitive resources for change and flourishing. Okay, when our system is 
is uh, available, the resources are available. We're not only you know, worried about not being safe or not being able or being restricted, then we can start flourishing. And this is uh, the main way that we try to uh, tap into social fields. And we do it everywhere. And we do it, um, for example, this is already working with municipality. By the way, Twilene, you'll be happy to hear that this municipality contact me, contacted me uh, two years ago and they said, we want to introduce cell into the city. So I said to them, yeah, but our cell model is really complicated and uh, you know, contemplative. Go to Castle and I told them to go to my friends that you know, work with Castle. And after two weeks they came back and they said, we read in the, in the website and we want C. <laughs> So that's how we started working with them. And here we're working with the municipality people. And we don't do any contemplative practices at the moment. We work on understanding the basic social psychological needs. And when they came to us and they said, they said we want to, to do this and this, I said, you have to walk the talk. You know, if you want to put sell, you want to introduce cell into to your city, you have to be sure that the people that are doing it are feeling you know, that their psychological needs are, uh, are um, seen. And that's what they're doing right now. We also, um, from a different, po different point, uh, different uh, um, angle, we are um, part of the Cell Challenge. Uh, it's an uh, initiative in Israel, which Kimberly is also invo involved in, where um, um, uh, we are trying to develop ways to help uh, educators be able to support uh, students in class. Specifically for the Cell Challenge, it's um, science and um, math teachers, but we work with it also with all other teachers. And the idea is that it's a platform that very, very easily teachers can get um, a pulse like a p feeling the pulse of the class in terms of psychological needs. And there's all kinds of ideas. And so they, ha and then they have, they get like a data story, really, really friendly to understand what's happening. They can see in the level of the class and in the level of individual children, if the children choose to uh, say their names and um, they get suggestions what to do. And then they can try it again um, and with a, feed like with a feedback loop. So this brings me, um, and this, this is really nice, and it's in developing right now, but if, if you want to talk about that, I think it could be really helpful in many uh, arenas. And this brings me really to the last part, which is trying to uh, describe the sensing that we're doing, because this um, platform that I just described is um, uh, sort of a way to sense what's happening in the class. And it's really interesting because a lot of teachers think that you know everything is great, and then through this platform they see, oh, you know the autonomy is really low, or competence is not so high, and they can work with that. And this this was done with Kaima Company. So, um, first of all, from the point of sensing, all these core skills are actually sensing skills because in order to sense, we have to pause and we have to bring our attention to different arenas, and we have to be able to. Um, look at things uh, in an accepting way and bring caring and uh, a growth mindset and an open approach, right? So um, at, the, at, the, at the very basic, the fact that people start working with these skills, they already become sensing organisms um, from inside. But we also bring in data. And here again, I found in your site a really nice model, which we're going to adapt. We use the, um, the PDCA models, uh, cycles, and, um, but, and we couple it I with um, contemplative skills, but now we can say what we do. We actually use your inference ladder, ladder of inference, and we understand that a learning, a learning organization is what we want to achieve, but the problem is, like you write in your model, um, people don't like to see disconfirming data and they don't like to work with unpleasant information. And for them, many of them, data is something that says you're not all right. How can we use data actually to help us flourish? So um, 
one of the things that, the central things we do in the program is try to change the atmosphere of how we work with data. And um, <clears throat> really um, trying to use data to sense basic questions. F for example, do adults and children in school feel that their needs are supported and not frustrated, by the way, you have to check both, both directions. What are the current climate, social, emotional, and well-being uh, measures? Do adults in school perceive their role as need supporters? You know, it's not trivial. Many adults in schools don't see themselves as need supporters. Not, the not, not all the principals and not all the teachers. What is the level of implementation of all the things that we're giving them, all the tools or the pedagogies in the school? Okay, and each of these can become a something that we can assess. Um, maybe assess is not the good word. We can sense, and then we can use it in order to uh, uh, continue to implement things uh, better. So, when we go to school from the beginning, we uh, um, we give all the teachers, all the adults, and the children questionnaires that look at these facets, and we do it every year. And, um, and then we sit with the leadership. You can see the graphs. But before we do that, there's a whole process of how do we work with seeing things that are unpleasant? How do we see the cracks? Yesterday, someone talked about the story, the Japanese story, right? Who, who mentioned that? Yeah, you mentioned. So, we also talk about that story, <laughs> right? And how do we deal with our cracks? And how do we look at the things that we don't think are perfect inside us? So we do a whole process internally, and then we go out and looking at the data. For example, for a principal, it's not pleasant to see all kinds of things that happen in the data, and also for the, for the leadership. So we do the, this whole process in a very, very sensitive way, and uh, schools bec start to do these cycles. So I want to give you um, a few examples, and we'll end with that. So again, the Savion School, um, they're like the leaders. Um, and when we, when th we did the assessment, uh, one of the things that actually they noticed, because we, didn't, we weren't aware that there's such a difference between the teachers and the assistants of the teachers in the school. But they noticed that there's a difference. And for example, the st the in, in measures of how much the adults believe that their role is to, to, to be need supporters, the assistants scored much, much less. So green is the highest, and and red is the lowest. Um, and also in uh, their perception of autonomy in the school, how much they feel that their needs are supported in school, there's a difference. And then um, to get, together with the leadership, and this is the principal, which is a very special woman, um, we created a um, course for the assistants and we let them even choose. They had three options to choose from. What do they want to uh, cultivate? And uh, interestingly, they all chose the CELL, a, a social emotional learning program. And inside that, they did a lot of reflection about their needs. And after some time, when we assessed again, then you see that the, 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 uh, the teachers, there wasn't intervention in the level of the teachers, but the, the assistants um, became much more uh, believing th about their role as need supporters and also autonomy. Another school, um, hmm. I'm, I'm just seeing, I see that something about my slide is, hmm. I guess I didn't save something. Okay, so I'll tell you. Um, so in another school, they looked at the, how much, the, how, how, how well are they implementing all kinds of practices? So first of all, it's very interesting to see that students and teachers have a different view. You probably know that, right? Teachers <laughs> have much higher evaluations about what they're doing. Students don't think they're so good, okay? Um, but so the teacher, so this school got this data and, um, and then they did a whole process of deciding what they will do with this data and a, uh, one of the things that they decided to do was to um, introduce a clear 
practice routines. So three days a week, um, on fixed days, a leading teacher sends ideas for practice um, for the following week and, and all kinds of ideas. And teachers uh, choose from these ideas and implement them three times a week and on fixed days. Also, um, each class has a purple board work a purple board and there they um, together with the teacher they develop all kinds of exercises that they can use for their class um, and then we reevaluated it again and this ha this appears here but for some reason it's I don't know what happened here so you'll have to believe me but you can see for example the difference here this in presence and intention um, and also here the red went down so this is a way to see that things are actually working. And uh, last uh, example is just from two weeks ago. Um, the school that um, looked at the, at, at the uh, results from beginning of the year. And what you can see here is that in terms of relatedness, actually the scores are okay, they look like the average. But in terms of autonomy, much, much less. This is, by the way, a religious school, and we see that a lot. It's very interesting, um, both in Arab and in Jewish religious, uh, in Ju in religious schools. We see that the autonomy levels usually are much level, both uh, the teachers and the students report on less autonomy. So this school, for example, um, now also um, designed together with their mentors a, uh, a, um, a plan to address this autonomy. Okay. Um, yeah, so, okay. So I just, like I said, we're working with the municipalities also. We're, we're developing a, a model for working with municipalities. Uh, if someone interesting, I can tell it, I can tell about it later. Something live. No, sorry. Okay, so I'm really sorry, but I just realized that something in the last slides, um, I don't have my last slides, so I will just say um, that I think, um, when, when I think of what we learned from the process, then I think we learned a few things that resonate with what I heard here. First of all, if you want to make if you want to make change, um, you don't have to go to you know to these higher aspirations. If we just talk about bringing love to school and love in the sense of let's make the, the schools places where the needs are supported, and most people they say yes to that. But pretty fast, they see how difficult it is, and then they need the contemplative practices and all the other things that come with it. So we don't, we, we just, you know, suggest that, and people come to us and ask us, okay, it's very difficult to do that. How can, we, how can you help us? Okay, so you just start from there. Uh, the second thing is really when we look at the organization as, uh, as a creature by itself with habits and mental models and emotions um, and we move through this level of individual organization individual organization and see that it's actually just different levels of description then um, it really um, enables people to start it's like different cushions some people go through the level of organization some through their own individual level um, we uh, see that uh, sensing, when you bring in contemplative skills, suddenly sensing and using data doesn't have to be something that scares. It's actually something that helps. And um, probably there's other things, but we need to finish. So I just want to say that, um, again, I'm so happy to be connected to this network. And if we can somehow help with all the things that we have learned and uh, um, developed, then we'll be more than happy to. Thank you very much for the attention.